Welcome to Perfection's Clutch Installation Lab. This is a 1998 Mazda B2500. And it's got a few miles on it, but it's in pretty nice shape. We're going to replace the entire clutch, the flywheel, the concentric slave center on the front of the transmission, and the master cylinder. Now these have been possibly the most challenging series of vehicles between the Mazda B series and the Ford Rangers to bleed the hydraulic release system. We'll show you how we get it done. Most of the work happens in a bench situation and we finish it off with gravity bleeding once it's installed. Let's get started on this Mazda and put a new clutch in it. Let's take a look at the fluid reservoir for the clutch. Already loosened the cap up, so just unscrewing it. There's the top of the cap. There's the boot. Pardon my camera. Uh-oh. Uh, there's no fluid in there. Now we're looking at the bottom of the slave cylinder through that black boot, that hole on the side of the transmission. And right there at the bottom, you can see some fluid on the bottom of that collar. That's where the fluid's been going. And this is a preliminary observation, but this is a self-adjusting clutch. And the length of that adjustment spring right there, you see how it's almost all the way out to the tip. That's a pretty good indicator that this system is thin, almost down to the end of its service life. Now I have to disconnect the pressure line where it connects right here. This split sleeve, we're going to push it in with the tool that comes with the slave solder and the line is going to pop out. But I'm not going to pull on this line. If I pull on this line, it's going to jam up in there real tight. Now notice, this is the early style. It doesn't have that extra shoulder out here. So I may have to pack that in even more with a screwdriver or we'll just have to see how it goes. Also, I want to wiggle this a little bit. Just kind of loosen it up. The objective right now is to salvage the line. So let's give it a try and see what happens. The tool goes in between the white sleeve and that collar right there. Try and work around the camera. <laughs> That's a surprise I got it out. The later sleeves have a big shoulder on the back end that makes it a lot easier to slide this forward and it pushes the tabs off of this shoulder. So that screwdriver is going to kind of simulate a tab. All right, so the sleeve pushes forward and pushes it off and then it can pop out. The old clutch is showing some wear on the fingertips again for high mileage, not unusual. But these springs, this is part of the self-adjusting system. As the disc gets thinner, there's an automatic adjustment system inside this cover, senses the change in disc thickness, and one time you push the pedal and this system ratchets or ramps out and adjusts itself. There's nothing you have to do as a driver or technician to adjust it. But because this little saddle on the finger right here is almost fully extended, if not fully extended, this is telling me that we're just a very short time away from this system just slipping and no longer transmitting torque. So this is a fully worn out system. Well, the transmission is out and there's our first look at the slave cylinder completely. You can see there's a little bit of face wear, not unusual for high mileage. 
but there's the uh, leak on that hydraulic system. This is why it's so important to very carefully check these and it's just good to replace this concentric slave cylinder whenever you're doing a clutch job. It'll never be easier to replace than when it is right now when you got the transmission out. So if you got the clutch out, seriously consider that slave cylinder. Now we'll do some cleanup work on here, make sure everything's in good shape, do an assessment of the old system, and start putting it back together. Now I temporarily installed the old flywheel and I've got our pilot bearing puller on there set up. And I'll show you how that looks as soon as I get this off and you tighten the nut and it pulls the pilot out nice and clean. It's a good idea to take a look see how deep the pilot is before you take it out that way you've got a good reference. And this tool really does a nice job There it is. Now there is another version of this tool that's based on a slide hammer, but I kind of prefer this one. It's nice and controlled, gets a good bite on that pilot shell, and pulls it out nice and clean. Now we're going to install the flywheel. I've cleaned up the back of the engine, cleaned that aluminum plate right there, and there goes the flywheel. Now this happens to be a pattern that only goes on in one location. Pardon me while I find the right spot. Spin it around. We find just the right one. And that's it right there. Each bolt has been cleaned. I'm just going to put a drop of medium strength thread locking compound on each one. I'll take that top one out after I get a couple in. And then we'll start the tightening process. Now if you were tempted to say, gee, if I had a lock washer, that would be all the better. Well, if it didn't come with a lock washer, I wouldn't add one because that's going to move the bolt out closer to the rotating clutch disc and you don't want to risk having the bolt with that added lock washer thickness coming out and hitting the back of the clutch disc. That's not good. Now the flywheel bolt torque specification is 54 to 67 pound feet in a staggered pattern. I've got the torque wrench set for 25. I'll just seat them. Reset the torque wrench and go for the final torque. There we go. You have to clean the friction surface of the casting of the flywheel and the pressure plate casting. So just with a clean rag, good spray of brake clean, you can use brake clean, rubbing alcohol, rotate the rag frequently. Notice the dowel pins are already in there from the, from the factory, don't have to mess with that. Notice I didn't spray the flywheel. I'm just trying to make sure I don't spray any of this, what could be solvent, into the pilot bearing, because that's got grease in it. We have to clean this surface right here, so some clean rags. Again. Brake clean, rubbing alcohol, 
solvent tank. I still say that's a little bit too dirty and don't want to leave any residue behind. So rotate that rag a couple times. This is the only surface you have to clean on here. You don't have to dip it. And there's nothing on the clutch disc at all that needs to be cleaned. Nothing. Now the input shaft on the transmission, the splines are all cleaned up. I really go after that. Clean them real good, take a brush, get all the debris out of it. Take the disc with clean hands, go up to the input shaft, and slide it on. Confirm that it fits. Good. Now we're going to lubricate the teeth of the spline. The kit includes a small pack of spline lube. Open it up, squeeze it out. We're going to distribute this on the teeth, and this helps prevent corrosion and allows the disc to slide freely on there. You don't want to over lubricate. That'll risk contaminating the friction material. But really clean this up good. Lubricate it lightly. Then I'm going to take the disc after I wipe my hands and run the disc back and forth on there and distribute that grease around. It just takes a little bit. Slide it on, slide it off, index it. You're just distributing that grease at this point. You want to wipe up any excess. No contamination. Now it's also very important to notice the disc only goes on one way. There's kind of a flat side and a side that has a torsion damper. In this case, the flat side goes towards the flywheel and it's marked. Now we've got the flywheel side of the disc facing the flywheel. So go ahead and hang it on a pin. Hang on another pin and just start a couple bolts. Now the alignment tool, I'm going to go in, pick up the disc, go all the way in, pick up the pilot and just snug a couple bolts, but I want to feel the fit of the alignment tool in the teeth and in the pilot. If this doesn't feel right, transmission is going to be hard to install, so this is very important. Take an extra minute and make sure everything is lined up. Just going to use a nut driver for a minute. Just start to pull them down a little bit. A staggered pattern. Check the alignment tool fit. Feels real good. Go ahead and start seating the bolts. Half turn or so in a staggered pattern. No air tools, sorry. Gotta do this by hand. I just want to seat them. Then we'll come back with a torque wrench. And the torque spec is 17 to 24 pound feet.
Now we're installing our optional non-self-adjusting clutch, eliminates the self-adjusting feature, and this standard diaphragm works great on these applications. This plate back here, I took it off, took it to the parts sink, cleaned it up real good, also cleaned the back of the engine, and I'll be putting a little bit of uh, wheel bearing grease on the dowel sleeves and on the matching dowel sleeve hole in the front face of the transmission. Helps eliminate a little corrosion and makes it easy for it to slide on and get in position. One thing about the pilot bearing, if you notice the pilot bearing, it may only have one lip seal. The lip seal faces the transmission, helps prevent the clutch dust from getting into the needles, extends the life of the pilot bearing. Now to remove the master cylinder, we're looking up underneath the dash. Right here is the master cylinder. Here's the safety start switch. So I have to remove that. Now I can disconnect the harness. I think what I'm going to do remove that plate right there, the little tabs, and that allow me to take the switch off of the push rod. Then I disconnect the push rod from the pedal arm and I can twist the master cylinder out of the pedal cluster assembly from the uh, engine side. And there's the master cylinder. It's underneath the brake booster. I removed this junction box of electrical circuits, kind of got it off to the side. Batteries disconnected, of course. Now, we're not even going to try to service this completely in the chassis like that. The line comes out with the master, with the reservoir, with the hose. Now to get it off, I'm going to rotate the master cylinder. This would be clockwise facing the firewall. And there's the master cylinder push rod. So it just takes a little work to get out of that uh, rather snug spot, but it can be done. And we've had the best luck taking these out as an assembly from underneath. So I'm going to go down, loosen up the inner fender a little bit, and we're just going to snake the whole system out between the inner fender and the frame area. Well, this is the new master cylinder I'm going to install. And that's the push rod. This is the old line. I removed it from the other master cylinder. We've got a new split sleeve with the flange on it, new O-ring for the connector, new seal and roll pin for this connection right here, new reservoir tube, and a tag that uh, tells me not to install the push rod until after I've completed the installation. If I put this on right now, it just makes it harder to work with, makes it a bigger package to put into that uh, compartment. So I'm going to leave it off and install it from underneath the dash. Now this is how I like to set this system up in order to start to pre-fill it and burp it. The master cylinder is angled push rod down, not push rod up. Push rod up will trap air bubbles. The line is kind of stretched out down, and here's the connector down here, and the reservoir is up top. In this orientation, as I start to pre-fill it, I'm going to actually burp the air bubbles up and out the top. Okay, I just put the first fill of dot three in there, and you can see it's already bubbling. Now, to expedite the process, I'm just going to open the check valve down here a little bit. On the bottom connector, just using a small screwdriver, it's going to pull a bunch of fluid in there, I hope. There we go. I got some fluid coming out the bottom. Now, this is not really a bleeding process. It's more of a burping process. So I'm going to add fluid. And notice the bubbles. It's just filling up. All that air is going up. So I'm going to tap on the system. And this helps chase the bubbles out. Now the master cylinder has a check valve in it. Right now the check valve is open. I'm going to take the master cylinder and use a substitute push rod, just a small Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to push a little bit, just cycle the check valve a little bit. This helps drive air bubbles up and out. When you initially start this, the push rod and the piston is going to move a pretty good distance. As you go further and further through the process, and it only takes a few minutes, and notice we've only put in about two reservoirs worth of fluid, 
the bubbles just keep coming out. Every time a bubble goes out, fluid is going in. And the check valve on the bottom, I only opened that initially just to get the first charge of fluid in there. Now how do you know when you're done? When we see about one eighth, one inch master cylinder push rod travel before the system goes real hard in your hand. Fluid doesn't compress, air bubbles will. So if I still get compression out of it, that's air. When it goes hard, that's fluid. It takes a few minutes, just tap on it, and chase those bubbles out. Could you do this in the chassis while it's installed in the truck? I don't have a procedure that'll guarantee you results or even come close in there. It's just been too difficult and too haphazard. Tipping the master cylinder like this when it's out of the chassis allows the air bubbles to go up and out. That's the real challenge. And also, the line where it crosses over the frame. That's another problem area. And I think we're almost done. I'm going to change the camera and show you how we prove this system. Now, how do you know when you're done? Using that substitute push rod, in this case just a Phillips screwdriver, I'm going to push in and observe how far the piston moves before it doesn't move. And those two marks on that white label on the screwdriver is showing you how little this piston is something moved, indicating there's no air in it. It's fully charged with fluid. We're ready to install this in the truck and finish with a gravity bleeding process. Now I've already replaced the O-ring on the connector and put the new sleeve on, which has the shoulder on it. This is all cleaned up. So I'm going to remove the plug. I'm going to leave the clip installed and just insert the line. It'll make a click when it locks in. There, it's locked. Now I've attached a piece of tubing to the bleed screw. I'm going to open the bleed screw and Tim up top is going to just keep filling up the reservoir as it drains out. It's going to take about a reservoir and a half or so of fluid and it's just going to gravity bleed. Fluid's starting to come out, a few bubbles. The fluid comes in at the side of the, the slave cylinder, fills up the bottom of the cavity, goes up to the top, pushes the air out the top where the bleed screw is. Now some of those air bubbles, if you can see them, might be coming past the threads on the bleed screw. It's not an airtight seal, it's a mechanical thread to make like a needle and seat arrangement. Tim, how much fluid have we passed through? About a reservoir and a half. About a reservoir and a half, we'll just keep it. Keep it full, or don't let it run out. You always want to make sure that the reservoir does not run out of fluid at this point. And I'm not worried about the bubbles that I see in the tube right now. Those are probably stray bubbles coming past those threads. That's the gravity bleeding process. And we used yeah, a couple ounces of fluid. Now the pedal is up. We consider this to be in the engaged position. The clutch would be capable of transmitting the engine's torque. Tim, go ahead and push the pedal down. This is the release position. And you can see I can easily turn the drive shaft. This clutch is releasing cleanly. Well, the clutch installation on the Mazda is complete. New flywheel, pilot bearing, clutch disc, clutch cover, concentric slave cylinder release bearing, and the master cylinder. Now, the truck is not that difficult to work on, but there are a couple bolts that they hit, made a little challenging. But almost all the challenges we hear about on tech support for the Mazda B series and its cousin, the Ford Ranger, they all relate to the hydraulic release system. People will install some component or work on the truck, and then they'll have failure to release. There is almost no way that we know of that reliably 
bleeds this system when it's all installed in the truck. There's a way to test the master cylinder while it's in the truck, and if you find you've got air in it, take it out, stretch it out, and get those air bubbles to go out the top, and finish it with a gravity bleed. Nowhere in this process did we push on the clutch pedal until it was time to release the clutch. That's just not part of our bleeding procedure or recommendation. If you have any questions about a clutch installation or a flywheel or a hydraulic system, give our toll-free tech support line a call. We'll be glad to help you.